I want you to open your heart and allow the spirit to lead and compel you to hit the like button and 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 and, and, and to hit the, 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 the share button and <laughs> and, and, and and to subscribe to <laughs> I got a story to tell. I got a story to tell. I got a story. I got a story. I got a story. Okay, for real this time, I really do have something I want to say, but before I do, I think it's important that I share my intent um, and the heart behind this video um, so you'll kind of know where I'm coming from. I'm going to talk about an encounter that I had at the end of last year with an individual and I just want the tone of this conversation to be cool and lighthearted, not harsh, not carrying any negative connotation although uh, speaking the truth because my hope is that I can bring an ideal to the forefront and that ideal is particularly the importance of social awareness and self awareness as I share this story and I talk about you know what happened Please, please keep in mind, I cannot stress this enough. I'm just talking about awareness. I am not demonizing or trying to criminalize anybody. I just want to take a moment to address um, our blind spots. I want to address um, maybe the, the lack of knowledge or sh shall I say the some of the setbacks that we may experience due to our lack of knowledge regarding how different ethnicities relate to one another and also address any biases that we have because we all have them let's just be real um, any biases that we are aware of biases that are deeply rooted and, and maybe a bias that we don't even know we have listen I just want to speak the truth in love and love and when I say that it's coming from a place of its true biblical meaning. So I'm not saying that I want to speak the truth in a loving way just because I got some on my mind and I feel like I just need to say it or I just need to be talking or I just need to be running my mouth. No, 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 that's, uh, that's not what I mean. I'm not saying that I just have to get my point across, but I'm going to do it in a way that won't hurt your feelings. That's, that's not speaking the truth in love. You see, when we, when we speak the truth in love, we have to make sure that love is actually the foundation of what we're saying. So when I'm speaking to you, love needs to be the driving force behind my words. If we are going to engage each other in this way, well, I need to do a heart check and make sure that my heart is filled with love. I need to make sure that the intent behind the words that I'm speaking to you will potentially set us up for a transformative experience or a change of mind that it will provide a sense of direction that it'll provide some hope that it will even bridge a gap now that'll preach for some time now i feel like i've been pretty solid at self-awareness but here lately i've been feeling this push in my back so to speak to speak in such a way that it will bring more awareness to the minds of those who I am engaged with. And that awareness can be spiritually, it can be emotionally, but in the context of this video, I'm specifically talking about social awareness, or let's even say racial awareness. Scripture says that my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Then it goes on to talk about how the people of God rejected his revelation. Now, without that revelation, the people would not be privy to or they would not be aware of what God actually intended for them. 
and because they lack the necessary awareness to know how much God actually loved them, they struggle to move forward in their relationship with him. This is one of the great tragedies of our society today. We tend to struggle with moving forward in our interaction with different ethnicities because we lack the necessary awareness that is required to build authentic relationships with people who don't look like us. If we are going to do this and if we are going to do it well, we have to do it for the sake of love, with no ulterior motive in mind, and we should allow one another to be who we were created to be without someone having to change who they are for the comfort of somebody else. All right, I said a lot, so let me go ahead and tell you what happened. At the end of last year, my wife and my two boys, we all attended a wedding that I had to officiate, and I was interacting with someone in particular, and during our interaction, I introduced my wife and my two children to this person. We're chopping it up, we're talking, we laugh and having some beautiful conversation and about two minutes into the conversation, the lady who I was talking to, she looked at me and she looked to her right and she said, oh, I, I just saw your other son run by. <laughs> now keep in mind, I had already introduced my wife and my two sons to this lady, but Somehow, some way, another son that I did not know I had managed to walk by. Now, let me back up real quick. I am not throwing this lady under the bus. She was a very nice and sweet lady. I didn't even get angry. It was awkward, but I didn't get angry because I knew that she just lacked the awareness <laughs> that we've been talking about. So I proceeded to tell her that no, I only have two children. I don't have a, a third child. I, and let me pause for the calls real quick. By the way, me and my wife that night, we was killing the game. I mean, we was fly. Check this out. Anyway, when I began to reiterate that I only had two children, she seemed shocked, appalled, and taken back. And, and, and she looked at the other boy and she said, that's not your son? <sighs> I'm just gonna say that with her lack of awareness, she just had a blind spot and, and listen friends, we all have them. But here is the issue. Oftentimes, and, and far too often actually, African Americans are only identified by the color of our skin and any other characteristic that we have is usually dismissed. If there is a small group of African Americans immersed in a sea of white people, there very well may be the assumption that all of the black people in the room are related. And all black people ain't related. I'm actually glad that our blackness was acknowledged and recognized. However, when you are looking at black people, to my white brothers and sisters if you're watching. When you are looking at black people, I want you to see the color, okay? But I also am pleading with you to take the time to consider the humanity of the person in the colorful skin. And the truth of the matter is, to my black brothers and sisters, the same principle applies for us as well because I would be wrong if every time I looked at a white person, I immediately thought about racist or they're not gonna like me or they're scared of black people. Like, it goes both ways. Check this out, I want you to see my melanin, but I also want you to see that I'm God's masterpiece as well. So here's something for all of us to consider. Let's take some time to really dig deep and reach for our blind spots and our biases. Let's take ownership and hold ourselves accountable to the lack of knowledge that we have. And let's just work together to be more understanding of one another and to be more unified. I am hopeful 
that if we take these kinds of strides, we will begin to see at, at some degree um, the racial barriers that are before us. We will begin to see those barriers being torn down. All right? Now, I got one more thing for you. I want to recommend some of the books that I have been reading that have really shaped my thoughts around this subject. So the first one is Many Colors by Su Chung Ra. My apologies, brother, if I mispronounce your name because my southern accent causes me to butcher stuff sometimes. The second book is by Austin Channing Brown. It's called I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness. Please go pick this one up. The third book that I want to recommend if you're interested in the history or the background behind all this stuff, I highly recommend Before the Mayflower, A History of the Negro in America, 1619 to 1962. Really good book. Finally, this next book that I'm getting ready to show you, I just finished reading maybe about a month ago, maybe at the least. And it sounds kind of strange to say this about a book other than the Bible, but I have to say that reading this book was very liberating. I mean, this book put language to pretty much all of my thoughts and all of my feelings. And that book, or this book is Insider Outsider by the Dr. Pastor Brian Loritz. I highly recommend that you pick this book up. If you don't get any book out of the four that I showed you, and I got a few more that I can recommend, but this one here, you gotta go pick it up. It is very helpful, it's very insightful, very informative, and it's very beneficial. All right, friends, I'll holler at you. Until next time.